Ulvina ka Facebook friends and family. For those who do not know me, my name is Alanya Tawakatale. Um, Lani. Uh, most people call me Lani. Um, and uh, I am uh, preparing this video uh, because uh, a number of uh, my friends on Facebook, family as well, have been reaching out to me in the last two days to ask for my opinion on this bill number 17 of 2021. You, you've all heard of it or read of it online and on social media. Um, so that's why I have this video. And uh, I had hoped to write a post about it, like just put up a status about it. But uh, when I was writing it, I realized that it would be too long, too long to read. And take me too long to write it, and because I knew my friends were waiting to hear from me, it's already ten fifty nine as I record this. Uh, ten fifty nine in the evening. Um, so that's why I decided uh, uh, maybe doing a video recording would be faster. Now, before I start, I'd like to put out a disclaimer. Like uh, I'm doing this in my personal capacity. The views or opinions that I'm going to share in this video are my own and are not those of my employer, you know, the organization or NGO that I work for. These are my own opinions as a formerly practicing lawyer and as someone who used to work for the Native Land Trust Board, as it was known then. Or, oh, as you know it now, the Itauke Land Trust Board. Um, I also like to beg your indulgence that I'll be speaking in English. Um, my, my Fijian isn't perfect. And I haven't had time to prepare a script so I can read it out perfectly to you. So, please, uh, I do apologize for that. Um. But now, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not All right. Um, yeah, so I am I'm a Fijian, or Itoki as they call us nowadays, a Kaiviti. I was a Lomiviti, and I was a Lomiviti, and I was a Lomiviti. I was a Lomiviti. I was a I used to work for an LTB or the TLTB. Uh, I worked and practiced law uh, with them and I started with them as a legal officer. And when I left in October to 2009, I was the manager legal. <clears throat> um, if you do a search on me, you'll find that I was also uh, the reason why I left the in LTB was because I was part of uh, the FICA case that included uh, Kenny Ndakundoketi and the late Kaliwa Timbakani, who used to be the general manager, and also the late and former Prime Minister Lysenia Garse was joined later on. Um, I was charged alongside them as uh, being corrupt by FICA and um, being um, they believed that I was guilty of conspiring to defraud the Native Land Trust Board. They, uh, they actually, FICEC, I mean they, uh, withdrew the charges after almost two years. They withdrew the charges uh, against me. Um, yes, but by then the damage had been done. Uh, it was difficult for me to practice law. And so I started working in the NGO sector and uh, used that knowledge for, you know, in other ways. Okay, so that's me. Um, now, after all of that happened to me, I steered right 
maybe it's to steer clear of anything to do with uh, with uh, native land, with Toki land, because I didn't want to remind myself of all that I had lost. You know, I really loved my work at the NLTB um, because I believed that I was doing work for you know for the Toki, for the indigenous Fijians. And I believed in that role uh, that NLTB, TLTB um, holds as the statutory trustee for all native landowners in Fiji. So I tried my best to stay away from it. And uh, my friends will know this because they've tried to get me to... Um, give them advice and I've always said look go first talk to someone else I'm sorry I can't help you with that I'd rather not um, but when this um, you know over the last two days and uh, today I realized that um, I realized that I needed to put aside uh, my own discomfort and that what was happening with bill number 17 was too important for me not to do so. So here goes. You know, much has been said on social media about Bill Number Seventeen of Twenty Twenty One, um, also known as the Itoke Land Trust Budget Amendment Act of Two Thousand and Twenty One. Now you can check it out for yourself if you go to Google. And you type in the words Bill 17 of 2021, like I did earlier today. And uh, Google will take you to the page that has it, the government, Fiji government website. And I encourage you, you know, I really encourage you to please, please read it for yourself. Don't be put off by what looks like legal speak. You know, it talks about subsection and section and cited and enacted, you know, all those words. Don't be put off by that. You know, you take a take a breath, a few breaths like I had to take, clear your head, and read it line by line if you can to see what they're seeing. It's just it's two pages. That's all it is, and it's really one page if you minus the explanatory notes, which is the second page. Now, the original, to really understand this, you need to go back to the original section 12 of the Native Land Trust or Itauke Land Trust Act. And um, I'll, uh, what I'll do now is I'll try and share screen so you can see it. You see, oh, sometimes these things work, sometimes it doesn't. Yes, yes, one. Okay. So, um, so this is uh, the Itoki uh, Land Trust Act. Over here it still says Native Land Trust Act. <clears throat> and uh, really, so we'll go down to section number 12 so these are the section each each like uh, part is called a section eh? so section number 12 it's about the consent of the board required to any dealings with the list i'm going to scroll down really quick i don't want to bore you all with this <clears throat> okay so this here this is section 12 all right so section number 12 this is what it says uh, it's about consent of board required to any dealings with the lease. And uh, this, that's section 12. And this here in brackets, that's, section, that's called what you call a subsection. You know, lawyers call it subsection. So section number 12, section 12, subsection 1. It reads, except as may otherwise be provided by regulations made here under, uh, here under just means made here. Um, it shall not be lawful. So, it you know, they can't do it. It shall not be lawful for any lessee. So the lessee is any person who is leasing, leasing native land or Itauke land. Under this act, 
it's not lawful for them to alienate when so what do they mean by alienate for them to sell for them to give it away give that lease away so they can't uh, they can't sell or they can't do any dealing so dealings is uh, right? they can't alienate or deal with the land comprised in their lease or any part of so sometimes they just see only this portion the rest of it i want to keep um you know whether they want to do it by sale by transfer or by sublease if they want to give it out to somebody else you pay rent come and stay on this portion of my land of my lease sorry my lease and you pay rent to me that's not right to do that they need the consent of tltb eh? or in any manner whatsoever without the consent of the board as lessor or as head loss lessor first head so they have to come first to the nltb tltb to get the consent to do that uh head and obtained eh? the okay i hope you're following if you're wondering why did she keep looking this side and not looking at the camera it's because i have two screens so i'm looking at the screen that you can see the screen that uh has the has the section eh? all right so the granting or withholding of consent it shall be in the absolute discretion of the board all right um so that first part that first part of the sentence so it's up to the board the board uh, TLTB can come up with whatever conditions. Right now, uh, when I was with the TLTB way back then, one of the conditions, if someone, one lessee, someone who was leasing land from uh, from landowners, you know, and had a lease from TLTB, one of the conditions for them to transfer or sell their lease was that they had to pay any arrears that they owed. Before you sell your lease, Pay your arrears. Pay Manda what you owe the landowners. So that was one of the conditions. There were other things, but it says here it's at the absolute discretion of the board. Um, so you know the board was able to come up with other things as well. Okay. Um, so if they needed, you know, if, if this is an example, if they were, um, you know, polluting the land. Eh? If they were putting, uh, um, you know, there's been some cases where they put uh, uh, spare parts and so on in the in that in their land. Yeah, I'm sorry, in the lease. If they were to do that and they wanted, and we had a report of it on fire. Sorry, we. I mean, TLTB. Maybe TLTB under this uh, um, section, they'd be able to say, look, before you sell it. We want you to pay your arrears. We also want you to clean up the land. Clean it up so that when you pass it to the next leaseholder, it's clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope you're following. Um, now, it also said that if anybody sold or transferred the lease uh, without getting their consent, excuse me, that sale, it would be deemed uh, null and void. Null and void is like nothing. So it would be like there's a big cross on that sale. Sorry, you might have paid that money to this guy, but you didn't get the consent. So that's what this, that is what this section 12 in the Itauke Land Trust Board uh, uh, Trust Act uh, says. Mm -hmm. So this is the original one. Now, now we're going to go into bill number 17. So I went online earlier today and I started looking. Okay, let's look for bill number 17. And I found uh, Google took me to this page that you can see in front. Hopefully you can see it in front of you. Um, and it has all these bills that government, uh, our government ha is tabling or has tabled already uh, before, I'm not sure, has tabled before parliament. I know that... Uh, these ones at least 17 and so on 16 and all will come i'm not sure whether it's all 23 that will come in the next uh, city okay so if you scroll down then you can see that there's two that relate to land there's the state lands act and the itauke so 16 is the, about the state lands act 
17 is about the Itoki Land Trust Act. So when I thought, okay, I'm curious, I want to know both. So I looked at both. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about the State Lands Act, just the Itoki one. So this here, this is Bill number 17. And a couple of you have already seen it. Now, Bill number 17. So I, I so we've we know we've seen on the shared screen um what section twelve says. Now this is what they're proposing to include. So after subsection one, that was subsection one. So after that, in the in the middle here, they're going to include this new subsection. Um, subsection 1a and it says here notwithstanding so notwithstanding is just another it's a fancy way of saying uh, never mind never mind what is contained what uh, subsection 1 says you know regardless regardless of what so uh, subsection 1 says um, so notwithstanding anything contained in subsection 1 the consent of the board of TLTB is not required for any mortgage, charge, pledge, caveat, or for any such lease to be dealt with by any court of law or under the process of any court of law. Okay, I'm going to break this up. And I'm going to the, you know talk about this part first. So what happens right now? So right now, uh, if anyone wants to mortgage their land, they have to fill out this, this form that they have to fill out um, when they go to TLTB. Fill it out and say, give all the details, you know, the title number, all that, and say, I want consent to mortgage the lease to whether it's BSP, Westpac, or ANZ, you know, FDB. Um, and TLTB, they will it doesn't go to the full board you know uh, it, just to make that clear it doesn't go to the full board but it will be processed through their offices you know their estate offices they have other names for them now uh, they'll look at it they'll get the file they call it a land file they'll get the land file they'll look at it and see is there any other problems on the land that we need to know about and talk to this uh, uh, tenant or lessee about and if everything is clear, if the arrears is uh, set, it's up to date, then they'll accept the fees and they'll stamp it. Okay. Now, the mortgage, the mortgage, the charge, the pledge, the caveat, all of those, it's just relevant just for the lifetime of the lease, just the term of the lease. The analysis is that the mortgage is the mortgage, the charge, the pledge, the caveat, the mortgage, the mortgage. So I guess I just wanted to make that clear. So um, before, or, or actually now, you need, it, you need consent from TLTB. And the importance of that is that, you know, uh, as a trustee for the landowners, we always know what's uh, sorry, I keep saying we because I worked there for so long, but you know, they, they will always know what's going on in relation to the land. Now, what they're saying now is that they, you don't need to do that. Um, there's some releases on uh, Facebook that uh, I think by the Fiji government saying that it takes time, you know, can take days, weeks, months. Um, yes, that, it, that's true. It might take, I was surprised that the months, um, it might take months, but that might be, could also be because they're cross-checking, you know, so they're doing their due diligence, their job, TLTB is doing their job as the statutory trustee for all um, Itauke landowners. You know, that's a big responsibility. So you can't just, someone gives a form and, okay, set, go. They also have to do their checks. So that's why it takes, uh, it might take time. But it's important, you know, that that process is done. Okay. Um, 
But what I'd like to say, coming back to that point about it's just relevant for the term of the lease. Once the lease expires, that's it. The debt does not, the debt around the mortgage does not attach to the land itself and continue after the expiry of the lease. So I just, uh, just hope that's clear. So that's what, I'm, you know, mortgages when you go and get a loan. A charge, for those who aren't clear, a charge is, FNPF does that a lot. I think SCC does it too. So FNPF, if you go and withdraw um, from your housing entitlement from FNPF to build your house, say, on your land, um, they will put a charge on your title, you know, your lease, or if you have a freehold. Uh, but if you ever sell that property, if you ever sell that lease or sell that freehold, they will come back to you. They won't let you can't that can't be done unless you pay back the money that you took from FNPF and it will be put back into your account, you know, because that money was supposed to be for your retirement. So if you're no longer living in this house, then you should give back the money. So that's what a charge is for. Um, SEC used to do uh, used to do it as well for and I think other town councils for rates. If you're going to sell your house, you pay your rates first, what you owe. Yeah. Uh, pledge and caveat are other, other things as well. So those things, they are only relevant for the, for the lifetime of the lease. Once it doesn't attach to the land, um, you know, the land alone, it attaches to the title, to the lease, and to the person who holds the title and the lease and who took out that loan or asked for money, you know. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, now, I'm going to, so this part here about for any such lease to be dealt with by any court of law or under the process of any court of law. Now, this part here, this is confusing because right now, you, I, at least as far as I knew when I was practicing with TLTB, you didn't need the consent of TLTB if you wanted to take the, you know, take the TLTB to court about one parcel of land and one lease. You didn't need the consent. You just go. So you, you don't need it. But like, uh, this is... The way this is worded seems like you need it right now, which you don't. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, I'm confused by this part of the uh, um, subsection 1A. Maybe, maybe uh, um, the Attorney General will explain it in Parliament. Hopefully they will explain it beforehand, but that's confusing for me. Uh, maybe they've made changes since I stopped practicing law. Who knows? Um, but uh, just also, I, I wanted to give you as well, you know, landowners who are listening to this, you know, no court of law um, can make any decision outside the terms of, you know, outside what's in the law. So, you know, need all your land can only be given out with your consent. It can only be de-reserved and leased out, like taken out of your native reserve. It used to be called native reserve or Itoke reserve. It can only be taken out with your consent. Um, and usually when it's taken out of uh, your reserve, it's also say, like given conditions. Like at the end of this lease, it will immediately revert back. Uh, or if not, it will have a time frame and your consent should should be attached to that. So no court of law will, would, uh, you know, um, would rightfully give an order outside of that, outside of those terms. Um, but it's good that we're able to discuss this now, you know, that we're 
feeling the need to raise our voice about this. So I just wanted to make that clear. Now, the next part that they change they're proposing, they're saying after subsection 2. So subsection 2, friends and family, is this part here in the original um, Native Land Trust Act, or Itauke Land Trust Act. So they're saying after that, they want to include this new one, subsection 3. So it would be section 12, subsection 3, it says, for the purposes of this section, any such consent shall only be refused where there is any where there is a breach of any lease condition or where such application to deal with the land is not in accordance with any law. Now, you might remember that uh, I was talking about uh, the original one. So the original uh, section said that it was it was at their absolute discretion. They could come up with all different kinds of conditions um, in their role as trustee for the landowners. Uh, but now they're saying they're limiting that to say that so long as the tenant, the lessee, so long as they're complying with all the lease conditions, uh, you know, they're paying their rent on time and so on. Um, excuse me. So long as they're doing that, uh, consent has to be given. Now, okay, some of you might be wondering, oh, he, that's that's worrying. Um, now this this is, I guess this this seems like um, uh, you know there are lots of conditions, lots of conditions on any lease, and um, you know as landowners, it's good for for you if you're a landowner and your land is leased out. You know, even for me, if my if my if the land back in uh, Yahoo was leased out, it's not. If it was leased out, I'd want to know what's the lease condition, so I can, I can keep an eye, or at least let my family back in the village keep an eye on that tenant and say, you know, are they doing, um, are they using good farming practices? Are they disposing of their rubbish properly? You know, things like that. Um, because TLTB um, offices, they can't be everywhere. You know, in fact, a lot of the breaches uh, that are done by tenants is reported to TLTB by landowners. And landowners will know this. Um, and they're well aware of this. Um, so there's a lot of other conditions. Um, and I guess this just sets it out in, uh, in law. And just also make it clear that everything is tied to the lease term. So I know there's, there's a lot of talk about, you know, this will open the door to them doing anything to the land without the landowner's uh, consent. Um, I would say not necessarily, not necessarily, because, you know, your, your trustee is there. The native land, or sorry, Itoki Land Trust Board, and um, you know they're there to safeguard your interests. Um, they're there to enforce the lease conditions to make sure that the tenants comply with it. Um, and yeah, you know, so I guess that's uh, that's what I wanted to share about uh, that particular section. Um, now that's really that's really all that's uh, that's in the bill number seventeen. Now, if you're wondering, o kango e zava manda o ko e tova kana bilgo se zavo kanga ya kimbe kila meki mem tovo e binaka se se. For those who don't understand it, okay, I just said that um, you know you're probably wondering. Okay, you've said so much, but what exactly do you think? Do you agree with this bill or not? Okay. Now, I'm going to come back. This was this is being put in place as part of the budget, um, and it and you can clearly see, uh, read that it's about you know read between the lines, and you can tell that it's about making it easier for farmers or tenants or 
whatever, whatever kind of lease they have for them to try and get loans uh, from the banks. Just cutting the process shorter. Um, so it's about that. It's about making that easier. Now, what's worrying for me is that, you know, hearing um, from uh, friends and colleagues that still work at TLTB, hearing from them that there was no consultation, no consultation done with the TLTB bo TLT board, the Itoke Land Trust board. That's what's worrying for me, is that, Okay, you want to make these changes. They seem innocent, but why didn't you talk to the TLTB first? You know, our um, our representatives as uh, Itauke, as Indigenous Fijians, sit on the Itauke Land Trust Board. They sit there. They have a responsibility to safeguard um, your interests as landowners. So... I'm worried about why they didn't do that. At least consult the TLTB. So it seems that that wasn't done. And for me, that's the point that's really worrying. Is, is this the first, it seems innocent right now, but is this the first attempt at watering down, you know, the act that protects our and safeguards our land, you know, um, our land is, um, we hold it, you know, at the deed of session and the negotiations for the deed of session. Our forefathers, they, they said that we don't have, um, you know, our title, our right to the land is our life one. It's just for our lifetime, but we hold it in trust for our, you know, uh, our descendants. So I guess that's what's worrying about this is that they didn't. There was no consultation, and really, uh, for this to go through, even if it's for the best intentions, they should follow the proper process. So if you're wondering, why didn't you just say that at the beginning? Oh, I I explained all of this so you know the full picture. You know, sometimes it's easier to just say a quick video, things about it in a quick video, um, which might not give you the full picture of what's there. So I hope that you're able to actually go into, if, you're, if you have access to the internet, actually able to look at it yourselves and make a judgment for yourselves. But really, this is important for us to stand up and have our say now because it's about, the importance of having your voice heard as, um, as landowners, you know. If you're not going to talk to all the landowners because of time, at least talk to our representatives that sit on the Itauke Land um, Trust Board. Um, so I guess uh, I guess those are really, let me see if I can, I'm going to try and stop sharing screen. Those which are, yeah, so... <clears throat> So those are the um, with those words. That's what I wanted to share with you all. You know that uh, uh, I'm really uh, heartened to see the the uproar on social media about no, oh, come on, this is our land. Don't take it away. So I guess we need to be raising our voice and saying that you mustn't do something that impacts us without at least talking to us. Um, and I guess that's something that we all need to be brave and, uh, and speak up about um, and follow the right channel, you know, um, whether it's through your maternity um, or Matanyasana, all those different channels that we have, follow the right channels. Now, we have these avenues open to us. 
I know we're not able to talk to them right now. Uh, I hope that uh, with COVID now that our Yasana um, provincial councils will think of creating Facebook pages so they can um, get our thoughts or so, you know talk to us. Um, but that's for that's for the Ministry of Itoke Affairs to this to come up with, not not for me. It's just ideas. But just to let you know, you know, there are there are channels open up there for you to follow. And uh, hopefully um, hopefully good sense will prevail. And you know, uh, the voices of uh, demanding that you consult us that you don't do anything uh, you know the um, the disability sector they have this wonderful slogan of nothing about us without us so really that's what we need to be stressing to to government is that okay fine you're saying that it, it won't harm us it won't take away our land um, and that it's just for the period of the lease. Okay, but why didn't you talk to us in the beginning? Why did you make this decision on your own without coming to us and talking to us? So I guess that's with those words, I'd like to close it off and, uh, um, you know, and just restress again that these are really my own views as an individual as an itoke as uh, someone uh, i guess who's in a migrant community uh, you know landowners here on the mainland in vitilevu they like to call us who come from the outer islands as ngalomai and uh, i might be ngalomai but i also have uh, these concerns as heart at heart i have my land might not be leased out like your land is leased out. But that doesn't mean that we can't share this journey together and we can't help one another. Um, so with those words, I'd like to say uh, good night. Apologies that it's uh, taken so long for me to put this out. Um, and again, these are my, these are my personal thoughts. Uh, and, uh, oh yes, to close off with, with lawyers, and I'm a lawyer, I'm not practicing, you will find two interpretations all the time. And remember in court, there are two sides. There's a defendant and a plaintiff or prosecution and defendant. So there will always be two sides from a lawyer. But uh, I wanted to speak to you and show you, you know, show you via the shared screen the sections and i encourage you to have a read yourself uh, so you can make your own decisions um because believe me you can read it as well and um you don't need a might be good to have a lawyer friend but you can also interpret it um so long as you sit down and take it easy and look through with a dictionary <laughs> um so thank you again everyone um, I hope you're all keeping safe with the COVID-19 uh, um, second wave uh, here in Fiji. And uh, God bless you all.